Yo, what's happening? What's up, guys? It's finally the day. Phyrexia All Will Be One is released. We had this off season, no set for a while, the winter, um, and I've just been playing a bunch of Explorer, but now we're back to standard, the new set release, and I'm super pumped to try a lot of these new cards, especially this deck, Green White Toxic, right here in front of me. Um, this is pretty much a block constructed deck out of the new set. Yeah, sure, we're playing some cards that are not out of Phyrexia, but the, the core of this deck is, is pretty much Phyrexia and also the mana base, which we're going to talk about in a second. So yeah, what is this deck trying to do? This is just performing what the limited uncommon Slaughter Singer says here. Whenever another creature you control with toxic attacks gets 1 plus 1 at the end of turn, a toxic aggressive deck that wants to kill the opponent, not by normal damage. It can, sure it can, but mostly by poisoning them to death. And with that, you have 12 good one drops for the archetype, Crawling Chorus, a one mana toxic one creature, and when it dies, you get a Might, which is also a toxic but one creature for 1-1, one, one, but it can't block. Um, there's going to be a lot of Mites uh, in the future of this video, I can tell you that much. But yeah, Crawling Chorus is good against removal spells. It can chump block once if you're in a racing situation. And then again, if you look at a one mana 1-1 one, one, toxic one, because you only need 10 poison counters to get the job done to kill your opponent, Toxic 1 is a little bit like 2 power on your 1 drop in a way, because it, it doubles the amount of damage that your opponent... You know what I mean, like, of course in creature combat it doesn't have double the power, but against a player it does because of Toxic. So that makes a card like this without Toxic we wouldn't play, right? But Toxic all of a sudden makes it interesting, and therefore I'm going to try 4 of them in the main here. Then we have Skrelf, one of the standout cards from the new set. A little Might that also has Toxic and that can protect our own threats or other creatures by Phyrexian, Tap. Choose a color, another creature you control against Toxic 1 and Hexproof. You can also give additional Toxic to a creature. So something that already has Toxic 1, you can give Toxic 1 again. And I'm pretty sure that's how it works. At least it will have Toxic 1 twice. So Toxic 2 essentially. That is, I believe, how it works. Um, not 100%, but like 95%. Sure on that. Maybe we'll get to try it this, this video. Um, yeah, and it also can't be blocked by a creature that that color. So in the late game, this one drop forces through damage. In the early game, it helps your more important creatures, like something like Job and Duelist or Slaughter Singer, to survive, right? If your opponent is sitting on a cutdown, but you have a Skrelf active, you can just give protection. And it is also a one drop that deals toxic damage. So this card is just excellent. And even though it's legendary, we're playing four copies because it just does everything you want to be doing in the stack. Last but not least is Venerated Rod Priest here in a one mana slot. One mana toxic one. Uh, one, two, and whenever a creature of yours becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. So this card is also quite nice against removal. It is a one, two, so it has even the highest toughness, at least for combat, that uh, could be relevant. Um, yeah, so, and you can also combo with this thing in... Maybe you've already seen the blue-green combo type deck where you just target your Broad Priest over and over again um, and then, yeah, poison the opponent to death. Um, that is a thing you can do, but here in this deck, you don't have that many copies with it. You just have a couple of Homestead Curses I have in here. I'm, I want to try that one. We can target our Rod Priest or anything else because it doesn't matter which creature you target and uh, pump them through, give them Vigilance, make them easier to attack through opposing enemy lines but also, yeah, give poison counters directly to the opponent, even if he cannot attack, or even if we just uh, played our Rod Priest, we can instantly give our opponent poison and help various things like our couple of corrupted cards. Skrell Scythe has corrupted on it all our toxic creatures. Every single creature with toxic has lifelink as long as enchantment is in play, as long as an opponent has free corrupted uh, poison counters. This not only pumps out 1-1s, one it also gives every single creature in this deck lifelink, which is ridiculous in a racing situation. Imagine just all your creatures have lifelink, you play against a red aggro deck or any other aggressive deck for that kind. It's going to be so difficult to race this deck and surely the one life you lose, I mean, whatever, you have corrupted online very quickly in this deck, so you're going to gain that life back instantly. Jawbone Duelist, double strike of Toxic 1, essentially Toxic 2, right, because it deals damage twice. And then you can also pump this thing up with Slaughter Singer to deal actual damage, right, or Homestead Courage, and make this a free free and it deals some 6. 
get through every uh, blocker that, that may be there. So yeah, pretty strong two drop, nothing crazy of course, kind of bad against removal, but I mean, I mean not bad against removal, but it doesn't have ability like Crawling Chorus or Venerate Rod Priest that punishes removal, nonetheless, it's a two drop, it's powerful, just like Slaughter Singer, so playing it of course. Annex Sentry is our little removal spell slash creature with Toxic 1 as well. Perfect for this archetype. Gets through an early blocker, which is all you really want, and gets your creatures in, attacking, boom, boom, boom. Also quite nice in a creature mirror, of course. For toughness, pretty decent against some decks too. Unfortunately, it's an artifact creature, so it will die to a braid. But nonetheless, it can always take out that pesky Goblin Shaman token that one of the best cards in the format, it still is, Fable of the Mirror Breaker produces on the first chapter. This is uh, just straight up stats. I mean, three mana, four, four trample. Okay, we're already talking about something pretty decent there. Toxic one. All right, let's go. And proliferate when it hits the opponent. So kind of has toxic two because it proliferates and a gift counter immediately after it hit the opponent um, with that toxic one. So yeah, this card is just a house. It's, it's just standalone, fantastic. Um, also works with the 1 plus 1 counters from Homestead Courage or Planeswalkers. You can proliferate Ajani, which we talk about in a second. Uh, yeah, this card is just an absolute beast. While respawning is in here, um, free free for free mana with Toxy 1, not that special, but with Corrupted, you get another free free, so kind of nice grindy piece. Um, I, I think it's decent. It's a bit slow, I know, but nonetheless, it gives you two free frees. There's also another card I'm considering, which isn't fantastic either, but it kind of does the job. It's a free mana instant. You can deal damage to an opposing creature or planeswalker to the number of creatures you control. I mean, we're playing a deck with 28 creatures. It's a 30 creature. I mean, lots of creatures. So uh, this deals just with a random blocker that's in our way. And on the other side, you can also make two 1-1 one -one mites. Not that bad. I mean, this card definitely has use. I'm not sure if it's better or worse than virus spawning. But for now, I'm going to try the virus spawning. I mean, you always get that free. Free, it's a decent body. Just overall rock solid card. This is this is more hit or miss. Um, and yeah, last but not least, I'm playing one copy of a Johnny. It also gives poison on the emblem, which is not that difficult to reach. I mean, you play it for four mana. You have it on four loyalty. You plus it once, plus it twice. It's already at six. And then you minus six and you get an emblem. Whenever you cast a creature or planes or worst spell, target opponent gets two poison counters, which does should 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 uh, get the, the job done fairly quickly, especially after you plus twice looking for creatures. And this deck is rampant full of creatures. So uh, how many creatures are we playing? Twenty eight exactly. So almost half your deck is a hit, and otherwise it's a scry one. You can then choose to put the card on the bottom if you don't want to draw it. If it's a land, for example. Yeah, just seems like a solid card. A uh, bit slow, of course, um, but yeah, just as a one-off for now, I, I'll try it, you know, but it's it's not locked. I think the cards that are definitely not locked are these five. Um, the rest should be pretty standard. I mean, Annex Sentry, you could make a case if the format lines up in a way where you just don't want interaction in, in this kind of form that you play, I don't know, the Charge of the Mites, for example, instead, or more rival spawning, I don't know. Yeah, but those are sort of the flag slots. In any case, this is the first day of the format. Um, I played this deck. So what I'm trying to say is I'm still experimental. I mean, we're trying to brew around here, trying new cards. Uh, I don't have high expectations on this. But what I can say is that I played this deck in the early access on Twitch. Thank you for Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring the account. And it crushed it. I went like 10 and 0. To be fair, best of one. Um, but yeah, it was pretty freaking good. And yeah, I guess to be fair, best of one and people were trying a bunch of Thyrexia brews, so you can't take it that seriously. But nonetheless, like, it felt pretty good. And one card we should not miss is the Seed Core, which I think might, it might just be the best card in the deck, actually. It's a one mana card, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it makes, man, it's one mana card, it's a land. <laughs> it adds mana of any color, spends mana, it only costs Phyrexian creature spells. Every single creature in the deck is a Phyrexian creature spell. Sure, it doesn't work for Jani, um, or yeah, I guess Homestead Courage, but, oh, or Skrull Scythe. But yeah, everything else you can cast with this thing. Makes both colors of mana, helps you cast your Contaminator or your one drops on turn one, which is quite nice. Um, perfect. And then the corrupted part of this thing is absolutely ridiculous. At instant speed, you can give one of your plentiful one ones two plus one at the end of turn. 
This pushes through your, your small creatures, your mites that otherwise might not be able to attack. You can just attack with like multiple mites and they have, I don't know, one block or they block one mite. You just pump the mite that has been blocked and that block doesn't look good anymore. Um, or with Jawbone Duelist, you make this thing into a, a free two double striker. That is quite the threat. Um, really strong card that pushes through damage in the late game. And it's just a land, you know, that's just fantastic. Uh, if you have multiple copies of these out and like Skrell's Hive going, you, you're starting to attack with all these hot mites and you're pumping them up. It is really, really good. Yeah. And of course, Razor Verge Thicket is the perfect card for this deck. A fast land. Fast land are the best in aggressive decks. And here we're playing one drops in both green and white. So Razor Verge Thicket is just the best. Just playing two overgrown farmland because we, we have a very cheap deck. We want to have our lands come into play untapped. Could go down to one copy as well, not married to the two. Uh, it could become awkward. I mean, you never really want to draw two of them and then uh, have the awkward issue that you have to play a tap land on turn one and you can't play a Rod Priest. And last but not least, there's a new card, Myrax. Uh, when it answers Battlefield, it gives you any color of mana for a turn, and otherwise colorless. Um, so it helps you cast, you know, your thing, your Slaughter Singer on turn two once, which is might just be good enough in, in, in a lot of cases. And then for free mana, you can create more mites in the late game. Just gives you uh, more toxic creatures, uh, a good supply going there. Yeah, just it seems like a decent card for the stack, of course. One issue I just encountered is that a Johnny Sleeper Agent is not that easy to cast in the stack because the Seed Core and Myrax make it a little difficult. Um, yeah, it costs you, you know, it costs only one colorless. So if you have multiple of these, uh, you might not be able to cast a Johnny. That's something to keep in mind. In any case, um, let's go real quick over the still experimental sideboard. I mean, this is literally day one of standard, so don't take this too seriously. But, you know, I, I still make my thoughts. Uh, make my thoughts. You know what I mean. I consider my options. And um, destroy evil right here. Mm, gets rid of shieldreds, whatever, big creatures, ruffians. But also can destroy, I don't know, temporary lockdown, for example, which is a really strong card against this deck, taking out Skrell Scythe. Lauren of the Third Path does the same. Um, the new, I don't know what the card is called, Ratchet Bomb. It's like a two-man artifact. You can put counters on it and blow everything up that has less counters. You know, Lauren of the Third Path is there to destroy that or again to temporary lockdown because really what the stack loses to is to those sweepers. Spot removal is not very good here. Uh, we have got a couple unlicensers to just yeah, do the graveyard removal thing. Another Peacekeeper against some sort of go bigger deck that wants to cast bigger spells. Maybe a control deck where we just want to see the hand. Betting announcement for some grindy potential. A Johnny Sleeper Agent 2 and 3 here in the sideboard. Just gives you a different type of threat, again, against control, against anybody who goes slower. Um, I would like this card a little bit more if Invoke Despair wouldn't be a thing, because Invoke Despair makes this card eh, kind of medium. Um, but we've got to see if we want to board it in against the black decks that have Invoke. Maybe not, I would I would think. Just rather have something like Betting Announcement. Um... On the other hand, the main deck is quite good against Invoke Despair, so maybe people are boarding it out. I would at least consider boarding it out if I'd be playing Grixis, but of course that depends a little bit on my list and what other options I have. All right, this was maybe the longest intro I've ever did, uh, explaining a lot about the stack and my thoughts into it. Let me know if you liked this or if this was just too long for you. In any case, now it's time to end it. Let's jump into the games. All right, sweet. We found an opponent. We're on the play. Ooh, ah, uh, dicey hand. But we got the courage with the duelist, and we got a spawning on turn three. And we're on the play. We'd love to have a one drop. This is borderline. I uh, have a lot of lands, which I don't like. But yeah, I'm gonna keep it. Okay, black leaf cliffs. Oh, scrawl scythe against the black leaf cliffs. Black leaf cliffs. <laughs> Can't talk. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the scrawl scythe on turn one. Um, just against a black grindy deck, whatever it may be, yeah, yeah, I figured. you rather have the Skrell Scythe than Jawbone that runs into, like, a cutdown. Okay, so now this is the turn where they wanted to play Fable. Because of that, I think I'll just play my Contaminator. Because if they have Fable here, then they would really uh, take a little beating off the Contaminator, which, which I kind of want to happen. It just puts them in a squeezing situation. Oh, either I play Fable, deploy my own stuff. Oh, that's nice. Okay, kill my guy, sure. Yep, yep, yep. 
Uh, I, I love this early standard stuff. Um, always, every set. It's just so fun when you... The early days, you play against people. Everybody's trying stuff. It's really a lot of fun. Okay, I could pump up one of these mites. Um, didn't play my viral spawning. I kind of like the idea of that. Get through this blood type. Looks like maybe they've cut down. I don't know. All right, they take the trade. I think I go with double striker. Or should I just go with the spawning? I go with the double striker and the one one. Ah, my opponent doesn't have a single toxic counter. Not having a one drop diminishes the speed. That I could have. Oh, this is. It, it doesn't matter that much. Scruff Scythe, again, is quite good against sweepers. And also the, the chorus, so yeah. I'm gonna leave this courage in my graveyard for now. I wouldn't get punished. I really don't want to prevent me from. I mean, if you want to one for one my. My mites from the Scruff Scythe, this is all good. Okay, they can't invoke despair. I assume this is just red black. Okay. Not a blood type, sure. Red black with multiple brotherhoods and the main deck. Tricky tricky. Uh no, something like a Johnny would be nice, I guess. We still have the virus spawning in the in the graveyard for later, but I still haven't put a core. <laughs> A poison count on my opponent. To be fair, they they just had about everything they needed. All right. Well, well, well. A chorus. Okay, let's put a mine. Let's pump this up, I guess. Although, actually, that was maybe a little stupid. Yeah, that was actually not that good because I'm kind of low on life. Um, I should have just put a counter on my chorus so I can block this harvester. That would have been better. Pwn's just playing out these lands. They have to invoke. Yeah, that's what I figured. Mm. Okay. Yeah, now I'm in trouble now. Hmm. Take six. I go down to six, I guess. Seed core would be a nice top deck. Okay. Everything gets lifelink. As soon as I get that counter on them. And I get the virus spawning right. Huh. Forget about you. That is pretty good. Are we, are we doing a little comeback here? If I draw a seed core, all my 1 1s would turn into 3 2s. I must say the the virus spawning was quite good here. Yeah, sure. Still need some good top decks. Okay, that that's a good start. It's a good start. Get in there. Just face the place. I'm gonna gain life every attack. They blocked the. Sure. Sanders Lounge and see a Taurus Proving Ground. It's just red black, but they're playing these for duels. Although, uh, now that you have Blackleaf Cliffs, Sulfur Springs, and Haunted Ridge, I don't think you're supposed to play these anymore as your duels. Sounds, sounds, sounds weird to me, I must say. Uh, 
you can just play 12 of the better duels, right? Why, why have tap lines in your deck? The cycling ability is free mana. It's not that good. I wouldn't play it for that reason. That, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm just pointing out things that I don't like in my opponent decks list, and I assume that sooner or later they will also not play all these tap lands anymore because they realize that 12 dual lands is is fine i believe I mean, you could play more than 12 i guess because of invoke despair and brothers and does give you kind of restriction okay fine i guess if you want to go really safe on your mana base you play more than 12 black red duels but i think like one or two maximum of tap lands is what i would do anyways what are we doing here mm. So this opponent will likely not have that new card, I would guess, that destroys stuff. Um, so I don't think I want Lauren. Ajani, again, hit or miss. I mean, if they have Invoked Despair, not that great. Annex Sentry, I guess, is a little mediocre. Brotherhood's End. So I want the Wedding Announcement, I suppose. Destroy Evil. Yeah, I mean, Reckoned Bank Buster. I guess Reckoner Bankbuster and Fable make Lauren again kind of appealing. Let's cut the courage. Let's add some more haymakers. Like just add these Johnnies. It it is awkward, isn't it? It is awkward, yeah. That they just are so bad against Invoke Despair. We'll try them nonetheless. <clears throat> Maybe I should play more Lauren on the on the draw. Just kill those Reckoner Bankbusters. <laughs> I mean, we, we kind of grinded our opponent out there. Right, they just conceded. They weren't even dead. Sure, let's go with this. Okay. Now here's here you would want to have a slaughter singer. Or again the seed core, but we don't have corrupted yet, so we can't pump up these one ones. Rod Priest does not work against abilities, it only works against spells. I'm pretty happy to trade my Rod Priest for their for the free two here. Yeah, this is tough. This is tough. Um if I play my bloated and they're just gonna kill it, uh, I guess I have a double block on a goblin. Hmm. Wedding announcement. Da, 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 da. It's a bit slow here. Oof. Okay. Yeah. I mean, reality hits quickly when you when you. Put your brew up to the test of some of the absolute best cards in standard. I mean, this Rakdos mid-range deck is just stock full of the best interaction and threats and card advantage things you can have. Yeah. Grixis Light, one of the best decks in the format. I, I've seen this Rakdos deck perform greatly in the in the standard challenge online, and I mean, there's no surprise to it. It just yeah plays some of the best cards there there are available. Yeah, I'm gonna try to double block. I can't allow them to have this goblin running rampage with producing more and more treasures. They might have a cut down or something. But yeah, I just I don't have a choice. At least they had to use this treasure to do this. Another Contaminator. I can just hope they don't have a removal spell, I guess. Let's attack first. Yeah, let's go with Contaminator. Yeah, I'll block. If Bradout's end. I would actually hope they have it, because then I can drop a Johnny on an empty board. Yeah, okay. Alright. But 
they do have the mana to, to kill my Ajani, of course. I could also just drop a vetting announcement. I'll just hope this Ajani sticks. I want to get it out on, on an empty board. And I just hope they don't have Invoke. Come on, find me a creature. Nah, what's up? Opponent. Ahem. What is this? Okay, we found a Skrelf. Let's go. Of course. And it just makes sense to top off your deck. You have a lot of cheap removal sweepers, and then to top it all off, you play Invoke the Spirit. It just makes sense. Uh, just pass the turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that is... Ooh, wow. Okay, that's your new card. Excel three cards at random. They hit the Invoke. And they also hit the invoke. All right, I'll concede this game. That is, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit lucky, isn't it? So first of all, hit hit at random. Okay, yeah, yeah okay. They, they it, it hits the invoke. Okay, they were a little lucky there. And then they recast it. I see. All right, sure. That's pretty freaking powerful. But it chooses at random. So, they had six options, and I don't know what the odds are to hit the invoke there. I guess not that bad, 50-50. Alright, fine. Well, whatever. Um, we lost. <laughs> that was pretty... I don't know, is this card good enough? I mean, if you don't have invoke in your graveyard, it just recasts a removal spell, I guess. Also costs you triple red. I guess now the mana base makes more sense. If you're playing triple red cards and quadruple black cards, playing all these tap lands. Alright, sure. Sure, I'll take it back. What I said about the opposing mana base, it does make sense now. Okay, nonetheless, we are kind of screwed here, huh? My opponent has the deck to answer me, I feel like. What do I do? Anointed Peacekeeper? A Johnny. A Johnny. A Johnny is like fantastic against, I don't know, like a blue white opponent, but this Invoke to Spare nonsense makes that Planespoker just kind of meh. Unlicensed hers. This doesn't even target, right? So I don't even know exactly what they're gonna take. Hmm. Next sentry. They kind of got every angle covered <laughs> that I can. That I can come off from. I'll just play the peacekeeper. I think betting announcement might just be too slow. I'll go for one wedding. I don't know. This is this is a tough matchup. And yeah, this is not the type of deck I played against in the early access, that's for sure. <laughs> no one drop, no scroll scythe. I think that's like my best stuff. But can't really mulligan the sand. I have a Myrex. This cut could come in handy. And I guess I could play a Johnny on turn three here. For one, two. They have a cut down. Okay. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the with the better curve though of bloated into a Johnny for four. Now you have an answer for the bloated. Or I can play a Johnny next turn and then proliferate the planeswalker. Yeah, okay. Mm, is that what I want to be doing? I could also play Jawbone, Scrap Scythe. Johnny plus and then plus again, essentially, with the proliferate. And then it can <laughs> just attack and invoke me. I mean, come on. Ugh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So what do I do? Just Jawbone, Scrawl Scythe. It's a bit better against Invoke. 
then do I block the stupid goblin or do I not block the goblin with my jawbone? I could also play as if they don't have invoke. I don't know if I ever beat invoke. With my kind of hand here. I can give this thing vigilance, which is interesting, I guess. I have to minus three, though. <laughs> eh. Alright, I'll, I'll go with the jawbone first. Again, I can put four counters on a jawbone, which is a lot of damage. I can proliferate this. I don't want to, though, right? Don't want to, no. Don't want to speed up Fable. Mm. Alright, do your worst. They kept everything in hand. That is absolutely fantastic news. I'll take it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I could sack the contaminator. Ah, uh, no, 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 that just doesn't make sense. Viral spawning. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll try to go grindy and just plus the Johnny. I could go minus and then, you know. I have a huge creature, but if they have go for the throat or anything, I just die. Put that to the bottom, please. Yeah, I mean, this red-black deck might even be better than Grixis against generic aggressive decks, right? Like, this is just a monster with Brotherhoods and in the main deck and cutdowns and a braids and go for it. Just infinite spot removal. Top by by Fable and Invoke. This is just one of the absolute best decks you could play against the creature deck. Yeah. Now they have the the six drop again to recast that Invoke. No, just cast that Invoke. Yeah, and with that, we can just move on to the next game and just, we, we are, we're aware of, oh, this hand is kind of terrible against what I got. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Well, <laughs> this game might actually not be over yet. The hand is really uh, mediocre. They can't do anything right now. <laughs> I mean, they can wipe the board if they want to. But the Merex is gonna. My opponent draws like five lands in a row. I can definitely be beat them. Uh, even though I didn't think I would be able to after they just cast double invoke. Well, nonetheless, this matchup is notably not good. Um, but hey, no, not everybody's playing Rakdos, right? Like, this is not one of the most popular decks. Um, I think Mono Black is already a better matchup than this. <laughs> Honestly, I can't imagine many decks in the format that make it more difficult for my deck to win. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just can't imagine that. Like, this is just the absolute worst matchup. Maybe someone in chat can tell me if there's something worse for, for a creature deck like mine than Rakdos with Brotherhood's end in the main deck. I mean, there's some hypothetical deck that doesn't exist, sure. 
not a not one of the common played ones at least out of the other format we don't know yet right this format is quite new there's not going to be a ton of change what is this about i'm just going to block with the peacekeeper it's like you cut down your brothers and still do the same your braid still does the same yeah this attack is just okay i see so i could attack with contaminator but then they just double block the goblin shaman Hmm. Maybe I should just do that, though. I could also play these two. Then they probably fire off double Broadout's end. And then I'm untapping from virus spawning. I could start making Murex tokens. And then Seed Core attack with them. It's a pretty slow plan. If I play both of these, what did I name? I named Brotherhood's End, so they actually can't do that. They need another land. Well, they can if they double attack with the Goblin, then they use up all the treasures. No, they just had cast one to cast the other for free mana. What am I talking about? They just need eight mana for that. All right, fine. I'll just make him have it, I guess. I mean, I know what they have. I'll just make them use their, their stuff. This is a little bit better, for example, against Blood Tithe Harvester off the top, forcing them to to kill the Kiki here. Essentially, that's what I'm yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah, one of the better performing cards is this Viral Spawning against Lack mid range. That's what I'm noting. All right, sure, sure. I'm at 12 already. I, they will likely blow off the double end if I do this blocks. Just gain two life, essentially. I know I could just take two damage, but I'm pretty sure they will still do everything the same. Now an Ajani would be good. Imagine they didn't have both those invokes, right? They would have had just one invoke. Their hand was kind of bad against my Ajani Planeswalker. Uh, I think I'll just make Mirex tokens for now. And if I draw another land, I can make a spawning and a Mirex token. A Mighty Might. The odds of me winning this are still fairly low, but hey, we have a shot. Okay, double seed core, not that bad. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Man, it'd be amazing if I win this. Yep. Okay, nothing, yeah. We gotta have one more cut down for that might. And if I if this would have been an untab land, I could have already made two mites this turn. Ah uh, well I should have used my seed core. That was I I should have used my seed core and forced out this cut down. Hmm. That's bad. Okay, we lose. I tried. I tried. Yeah, we're gonna lose against that thing. They probably have like two copies of this in their deck. Didn't really keep any outs. Don't have any removal for that. I can kill artifacts and enchantments for Lauren, but... Okay, that's a good card. It allows me to block it. Buys me some time. Yeah. Uh, 
I assume the blocking won't work. It's tough to have something like destroy evil in your deck against like two copies of Shieldred. It's tough to, to do that. Their, their charge of the mites would come in handy because it is not only a removal but also a threat. So that's something you could keep in against the deck like Rakdos to have an answer potentially against the Shieldred. Uh, they're not gonna attack? Okay, so th this tells me that they do not have an instant speed removal for one of these beasts. Another contaminator. Well, well, well. Okay. I could attack with everybody here. I'm gonna kill them with the might that I pump. I'm gonna take... F block one beast, take two poison. Yeah, no. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna play defense for now. Build my little boat position up. Mirex looking fantastic. Seed core and Mirex both kinda great together. Gonna use that blood token. That does make sense. Probably have a bunch of lands. So, yeah, swamp in the bin. Man, if I had an answer, or if they wouldn't have drawn Shieldred, <laughs> they would have lost easily. Like if they just have spot removal, spot removal doesn't do the trick. They needed the Shieldred to get the job done. Yeah, you saying? Okay, okay. I'm at eight. This produces one counter here, two counter here, and I can start swinging. Or I could just plus and try to win with the ultimate. I'm at six, so plus to five. And what then? Then I go to 4, then I plus to 6, then I go to 2, and then I minus 6. And I have to hope that I have enough poison by then. Ooh, might be the case, might not be the case. So what's the hand? If they have one go for the throat... I'm, I'm doing okay if they have one go for the throat, if I go for the plus pull. I think I'm gonna go for the minus, yeah. I'm gonna go for the minus. The plusing is a bit slow here. I put one count on the contaminator and two counters on the beast. That's ten damage coming across. Even if they have one go for the throat, it's still coming. It's still five damage. Attacking with the mites here, is that reasonable? Not having a braid. They have one go for the throat, yep. You, if you don't have two... Uh, okay. Attack for five. If I attack with the mites, they can just block block might, or block one might. Uh, maybe it's fine to attack already with the mites, I mean they're not doing much else. Chump. Okay, yeah, I'll let this happen. It's fine by me. I'm gonna cut down one of the mites, sure. Oh no, what do you got? Hey, you have another cut down? Okay, that's fine. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we're kind of all in on this 5 5. We're also dying in two turns, and eh, three turns. We kind of only get two real draw steps, though. 
So yeah, we we're dead and free. Oh, this is this is crazy. I could draw Skrell Scythe to have some life link. They had triple cut down. Um this kills my planeswalker, yeah. Oh, come on. They must have just drawn this. Ah, so close. Almost would have won against them. Just... If, if the Shieldred wouldn't have come, I surely would have won this game. Alright, GG. Yeah, the Shieldred was the blocking stone. I could have attacked with all my 1-1s one all the time, but I would have at least used all their cutdowns on those. This is one of the worst matchups for the deck, so... Not surprised to lose. But it was still close. Alright, we're on the draw here. This is too many lands for me. It's a nice start. It also has double seed, Koen and Ganja. I mean, this is almost... It does have three utility lands in a way. But if I draw more lands, this could get tough. Yeah, this works. Let's put a Singer back. Of the chorus. Pawn's already deep in the tank here. Obscure storefront. Either a budget deck or you're playing the four mana three four angel. Turns permanence. Actually, maybe I should have played Rod Priest here on turn one, because Rod Priest allows me to attack into Italia, while Chorus can't attack into Italia. Ossification. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, you, you're playing... I see, I see. You're playing... That's because you want to have lands for lay down arms. Maybe that's the reason here. I don't know what's going on. So it's just black, white, or... Esper? Black, white, control, something like that? But play my priest and they have a sweeper. It's not good. But slow rolling my priest, eh, I don't know, I don't know, like, doesn't seem that good either. Out of the dawn sky, okay. Not a priest. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh... Reality hits your bruise fast. If I draw cr the courage, <laughs> that would be really freaking good here. I would just uh, instantly put my opponent to uh, 9 poison. Triple rod priest. So yeah, that's that's an out to the situation. Okay, it looks like we're playing against... Yeah, sure. Kind of awkward that my sentry is bad against both their good threats. Okay, we just won the game. Wow. Okay, I I I don't even know what to say. I mean, this is just a bit stupid. I feel it feels a bit stupid. Maybe maybe it's a testimony. Maybe we should play more of the courage. Yeah, opponent's just dead. I attack for everybody, I die. It's crazy. I mean, that, that was incredibly lucky. That was literally the only card that could get me out of that situation. Wow. Okie dokie. Um, big, white, nonsense. Ow, Sarah Paragon. I guess I won't destroy evil here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sentry, probably not that good. A Johnny. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. What a peacekeeper. I'll try some Lawrence. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. 
by respawning. Homestead Courage. I mean, this seems to be a grindy matchup, so I don't necessarily want to Courage people. Maybe Planeswalkers is the, is the way. Cut a Rock Priest for another Lauren. And try to go a little grindy. Tough. I mean, the, 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 this type of mid-range deck we're facing looks it's just so many different angles of attack or like different types of things you have to consider or take into consideration. Makes it hard to sideboard against. It's like you probably play a couple, couple, couple of copies of Ao again, and then, but they're not really committed to any real one thing, one strategy. A trade that's good for me um go with double one drop or go with the jawbone we go with the jawbone here and double one drop is also appealing ah, peacekeeper yeah that's a blocker like this for example i just don't know what's going on over there peacekeeper is just oof like stops everything in the tracks right now They attack, yep. I need the singer to pump my board, that'd be that'd be pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, touche. Ah, uh -uh, you beat me. Vanquish the Horde. Great sideboard card here. <clears throat> right, I'll just go ahead and concede. My opponent's at... Zero poison and has wedding announcement and uh, a little army over there. I'm um, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I already made my deck. I cut the rod priest. One of them. My deck is kind of okay against sweepers. I can I can do more. I can add like wedding announcement. I can also add fateful absence. Maybe I need four Johnnies for a matchup like this. They also have Ossification, which kills a Johnny. At least Ossificated. Whatever that is that even a word in the English language? Ossification. I don't even know what that means. Ossificated. Well, we can we can have Lauren to blow that thing up. I guess that's the deal. Yeah, if I draw a Johnny and they don't have Ow or other flyers to annoy me with. Okay. Let's go. Let's try this. Or Skralf on turn one would help protect some of my stuff. But yeah, what won that game was kind of the free free, and that's a little bit embarrassing that a free free got me to basically sit there and do nothing and just deploy to the board and then they yeah. Sweeped and I was dead. What are we doing here? Slaughter Singer or Jawbone. Just go with the jawbone, I think. The singer is better than the jawbone. At least in this hand. Is that so? Uh, Late on arms, sure. Seed core, all right, why not? <clears throat> okay. Oh, you kidding me? They have laid on arms number two. Oh my god, this is just they're playing constructed over there. Woo! There is a place for all. 
Mm-hmm, okay. Johnny all the way. Johnny all the way. Okay, you can you can have some one ones. That's fine. Okay, mm, I keep on plussing. I don't need that. Just put everything on the board. Protect my Johnny. Fuck Commando. Cool. Betting. Sure. Not other Johnny. Alright, let's plus this thing. A creature. Do I keep that creature in my hand for the Johnny poison thing? Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Is that wild? I should play my Rod Priest. Have another blocker at the ready. So ultimately, if I get that emblem going, I think I'm not going to lose this game. Especially with the second Johnny in my hand, I should be able to find 10 creatures, right? And then... Uh, five creatures. Five creatures, each creature gets two poison, they die. And I also have a board state, so I can also deal damage with that. Yeah, Johnny goes quickly to the ultimate. Betting announcement, sure thing. I can also draw extra cards with the Lauren. Do you want to do that first? I guess why not. Mm. One less blocker, I guess. All right, sure. I go for the Johnny first. Do this again. Oh, planes focus two, so they already get two poison there. Mm, no thanks. I guess something like the Chorus could attack. But again, this, this is not really about attacking. Each toxic creature gets 1 plus 1. It's not really about attacking here. I'm just going to win with the Emblem. They can't do anything about that. The 26. Yeah, Johnny really did the, did the job here. They stumbled a bit. They didn't have any of their big flyers. They had laid on arms, which was fantastic against... My early aggression, but a Johnny just doesn't care. Screw off Hive. It's not a creature, I don't like it. Uh, yes, I'll activate you. I guess you can kill the Lauren now. Hmm. Well, could have done that at any given moment, probably. I am almost sad to see you go. Hmm. It's gonna be okay. I could have played around the Wandering Emperor, though. All four at the Johnny. So these guys can turn into free freeze. Okay, you would just want to pass priority. Sure. Uh, 
That was a, that was a clean up. <clears throat> Still don't know what they're playing black for. Maybe uh, Ride of Oblivion. Okie dokie. My Rex activated again. So draw a creature could I, I could technically minus this Ajani and then put my opponent to four poison uh, give my opponent four poison and if I draw one more creature for the rest of the game I win hmm. otherwise I can plus if I find one creature it's going to be the same outcome <laughs> uh, yeah I think I'm just going to plus this Ajani a lot of creatures in my deck, there's another Scrub's Eye. Yeah, that's that's a kind of a creature, but not really. I can attack with all the mites. Then they likely block two. I mean, they'll block everything, but lose two, two of their creatures. Yeah, I think that's worth. Yep. Okay, I'm at 26. Two more creatures and you die. Can my deck do that? Or is this mono white mid range mess good enough? To, to beat my Celestia Toxic Brew. Find out in the next couple of minutes. Ad break. Uh, I should have activated my Murex first, maybe. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I could have also named Johnny. Make that more expensive. Yeah, now I actually won't be able to seed core and Murex. I lost out on a mite for not doing what I did. Not doing what I was yeah, meant to do. Although I guess they could have named seed core if I name Myrex. If I activate Myrex in response, they can name seed core and I can't pump the jawbone to block the 2-2. Two -two. I gotta consider all all options, so I guess I played around that and did not deny. Alright, draw a creature, a Johnny into a creature, easy game. Well, or planeswalker, that's fine too. A, J a ganjo, not fine. Alright, let's play this. For its full cost, put it to eight poison plus. There we have the win. Okay, a Johnny ultimate grinding it out. <laughs> oh god, this is hilarious. But good to know. Good to know. I mean, if you want to have an angle of attack against the the, the mono white deck, planeswalkers, 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 a Johnny, a Johnny, a Johnny. We are my one drops. I'm playing 12 of them. Keeping. Data stack is a lot worse when you can't go one drop on turn one. Where's my Skrelf? I have some Skrelf on turn one action. Haven't really had that one yet. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's play this Jawbone. Those were some grindy first two matches here. Man. Because that's what standard is has become just a mid-range grind fast, Grixis, Rakdos, Mono White, slow, grindy, 
Mm, a Liliana of the Veil, nice. Must be nice. Yeah, if I had a one drop in this game, just completely different against a Liliana. For example, that Chorus card, so good against Liliana. But yeah, this might turn out difficult. So now they just kill my guy, and then Liliana kills another of my guys, and yeah, I lose. Okay, I guess that's fine. I'm on black. Oh, it's Grelf's Hive. I mean, Liliana's also sad, so, so embarrassing against Grelf's Hive. But you gotta draw those cards, don't you? Bacha. Invoke Despair. No way, they had it! Oh my god! Standard is pretty basic these days, isn't it? Seems pretty basic. Everybody's doing the same. I'm empty handed now. My opponent has free cards and a lily going. I give myself the odds of winning this game are below 3%. I need this Ajani. Oh, I reckon a bank bus as your last card? Okay, I have 1% left to win this game. I need Ajani right now. Nope. Right, I'm just gonna pack it up. Mono black, infinite removal on the play. I didn't have one drop, but GG. <laughs> Life sometimes is that simple. Um, an Eccentry is not looking fantastic. Let's put these Ajani's in, vetting announcement, and. Evil, Lauren. What a black might have Phyrexian Arena nowadays. Again, there's the, there's the Shieldred that's probably in there too. Peacekeeper, Shieldred. Da, da, da. I'll try to play around Shieldred this time. I mean, Mono Black might have more of them. They might play three, four copies. Ah. Uh. Okay, <laughs> I expected this to go a little bit better, it just feels, I don't know, to be fair, this particular game, I was not on the play, which is pretty important in this format, it feels like, it just, you want to be on the play, you want to get on the, you want to get your foot on the gas before, before your opponent can, that gives you the advantage, all these cards snowball better when you're on the play, invoke the spares, like, 10 times better when you're on a play and when you actually have the board be clean instead of when you're on a draw and your opponent has a good board position. Yeah. And you want to have your one drops, of course, with a deck like this. Really important. Especially against the black decks. But yeah, this hand looks quite nice. Scroll of Scythe, turn two. Oh, we got the cutdown. Oh, the main phasing cutdown. You're a diamond player. What, what's going on here? Are you, are you playing around a removal spell? Uh, sorry, against. Like, are you playing around protection? You can't be. Like, this must just be a mistake. Or, I, I mean, it's the first day of the new set. They must have misread what, what the card says. Well, I'm not playing Contaminated to have it go for the Throated, so I'm going to play a Wedding Announcement. They just straight up concede. Okay, maybe they had a Liliana in their hand and we're like, yeah, this looks pretty embarrassing, because it does. Okay, and maybe they were also embarrassed by that Crawling Chorus play. So a card that would be pretty rough against me out of a Mono Black deck is... Um, malif malicious, mal mal malicious Malfunction or something like that? Malicious Malfunction, I think it's called. It's minus two, minus two for free mana, but it also exiles, so it's good against the Chorus. Um, it, it kills kind of everything in my deck besides, I guess, some of the bigger free drop creatures. But yeah, against those, they just go for the throat. So, but I mean, we're, we're day one of the format. I don't think people are playing that card. There's not much reason to play, play it in the sideboard. Interesting. I might just bottom this. I kind of like the idea of that. Is that just going to either go for the throat? 
Could have bought him the land, maybe. It's a bit greedy. Drown in Ichor. Hmm. Not a particularly good card if you don't use the proliferate aspect. I mean, it's decent, but like there's better options. <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Graveyard Trespasser. Guess the race is on. Now you want to be careful there. If I would have played the Might first, I would have had to lose a life because they wanted to pay the Might with my Razor Verge figure, and the Seed Core can't pay for Scrap Scythe. Yeah, what a tapper. He's still got to learn how to play this deck or tap this deck. Okay, the issue here is if they just stay back with this Trespasser, uh, my 1 1 army isn't doing much, but they're attacking, which allows me then to hopefully get the seed core online and with that. Or my corrupted on the scrap size too. Oh gosh, that missing another spell there was so big. It allows them to flip the trespasser now. Ugh, terrible, terrible. Really needed a spell there. I guess I should have bought him to land and kept the contaminator. I mean, how could I have known? Go to eight. Yeah, why not? Why not? Makes sense. Okay, I'll just instantly concede. Come on, are you kidding me? I, I'm, I'm also dead. I'm, I'm just straight up dead here. So they take four and lose two in my upkeep. And they do have malicious malfunction in the deck because, of course, I mean, you gotta be prepared for the Celestia Toxic deck. Okay, well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We tried, we tried. Uh, here in the first couple of days, I'm gonna try these these more off the beaten path decks, these brews. Um, or yeah, just you know, box them through the format, see if something sticks. If it doesn't, we learn from it, we can let go from it, and we can move on to other archetypes. And maybe sometimes we are lucky and we find a hidden gem. But with Green White Toxic, uh, I don't know. It feels too fair. It does have ways of two, two, uh, two for one in your opponent and being good in card advantage situations. Da, 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 da. But nowadays, standard is so powerful and there's so much value packed in all these little cards that just having two for ones and a couple value things here and there just doesn't get the trick, the job done. This deck would have maybe been great five years ago in standard, but this standard format is just inherently really, really powerful already. So, yeah, this Celestia deck doesn't have a place right now, I think. Maybe, I, I mean, you could go more of the Rod Priest route, have more courage, just have more tricks, but I don't see that being particularly better. It might be a better version of this archetype nonetheless. And I guess I was a bit unlucky in my draws today. So this deck could still be decent. Um, if you've been pumping a bunch of gems into buying packs out of Phyrexia, you can build this deck. This block constructed deck. Maybe we have some events in the future where we can just play block constructed Phyrexia or will be one. I think this will be the best deck in that format because it's just it's a full-blown deck and it's already good and it has decent mana. Um, and it has the seed core, which I still think is a fantastic card. But yeah. Um, there's some weaknesses to this, and uh, we just saw those in this line of matches. All right, guys, nonetheless, this was it for this one, but there's going to be more coming up. I'll try to have a video every single day from now on, and I hope you are going to tune in for those. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I see you soon. Bye-bye.